Yes, welcome to Barks of Rye. With me for the day is this brand new 2023 Honda CV750 Hornet. Thanks to Norton Way Honda in Letchworth Garden City for the loan. Links will be in description. Now, although the latest Honda Hornet is a completely new bike, it's actually a revival of a model that Honda first introduced into the market in 1998. The first generation Hornet was based on the Honda CBR600F, a sport bike, but with a retuned engine and more upright riding position. The Honda Hornet quickly gained popularity among riders due to its sporty performance, practicality and versatility. The Hornet appealed to riders who wanted a more comfortable ride for daily commuting while still having a bike that was fun to ride on the weekends. The Hornet's popularity was further boosted by its unique styling which featured a compact and minimalist design with a muscular fuel tank and an exposed frame. Its distinctive appearance made it stand out from other bikes in its class and helped establish its iconic status. However, Honda ended production of the Hornet in 2012 and replaced it with the Honda CB650F in 2013. Despite this, the Hornet's iconic status remains evident today, with many riders and enthusiasts holding it in high regard and praising its contributions to the motorcycle industry. So in this video, we're going to see if this latest Honda Hornet is in fact a worthy successor to what was an iconic model, and we will see if it has what it takes to compete with the latest bikes in its class. And so what a better way to do so than to kick off examining the Hornet's features with a detailed walk around. Throw a leg over the Honda Hornet, and you find a low seat height of 795 millimetres. As you can tell, I can easily flat foot the bike at six foot tall, and the bike weighs 190 kilograms wet. When sat aboard, you find this five inch TFT display, which has your fuel gauge, obviously your rev counter, you've got your time at the top, uh, your trip at the bottom, and then you've got your rider modes, which we are in standard at the moment. And if you come over here to this toggle switch and just hold it to the right hand side, you then bring up the menu. And so you can go through and set up your different rider modes. Uh, you've got different display types. So we're in display type three, and I'll show you what the other ones look like. You can also link your phone to the bike, which will allow you to use voice commands to change things like your music and sat nav. Taking a walk around the bike, we find non-adjustable 41 mm Showa upside down forks. We have four piston Nissin radial calipers with ABS. The headlight is LED. And actually the bike has LED lights all around. As for the engine, well, it's an all new 750cc eight valve parallel twin with a 270 degree crank and produces 91 brake horsepower and 55 foot pound of torque. Fuel capacity is 15.2 liters. Standing back and having a look at its appearance, well, looks are subjective. To me, at least, the bike looks like it has been built down to a price. The styling isn't trying to be flashy, but sensible. But let me know what you think in the comment section below. I guess you're also wondering, how much does all of this cost? Well, coming in at 7,000 pounds, the Honda Hornet is the cheapest in its class. Now that could even mean the Hornet isn't quite as good as it needs to be, or it could be the bargain of 2023. So how about we discover just that by taking it out on the open road. Okay, now I've been on the bike for at least 10 minutes, I wanna start discussing the ergonomics. How does the bike feel to sit on? Is it comfortable? It's a seat position which kind of blends comfort with a sporty nature. And so the way I'm sat, I feel fairly upright. My back's pretty straight. My lower back feels good. There's not much of a bend in my knees. And the way my feet are sat on the pegs, I'm not on the balls of my, I'm not on the, to on the toes. And so more natural for me on this bike is to sit with the center of my foot on the pegs. And so that gives you an idea of kind of how you would typically ride. 
the CB750 Hornet. A lot of people I have seen online, I've watched other reviews and I've read other reviews and they say the Hornet is potentially a little bit cramped. I'm six foot and I am not getting that at all. Yes, the bike is small, it's got a, it's got a narrow wheelbase and it's quite squat, but I don't feel like I'm cramped on the bike. Personally, I have to disagree with that. Now I've brought the Hornet to my local town centre because I want to see how it fares at slower speeds. And I can report the throttle is a little bit too snatchy. Though the fueling feels crisp as you like, there's no surging, there's no missing or anything like that. I mean, I am in rider mode standard, and I just feel like the first, you know, the first five or ten percent of the throttle opening is slightly too urgent. I'm gonna try it in rain mode. We're in rain mode, yeah, we're in rain mode, and that is a lot better in fact that's what you would want around town i don't want it to be trying to get going when i'm only giving it a small input and you can be quite heavy with it actually even initial it might snatch initially but it's not trying to run away with you when you're only giving it a little bit of throttle so yeah Rain mode's probably what you'd want to use around town. Now I would say the parallel twin is silky smooth. The 270 degree crank essentially is a fire in order to make the engine sort of behave like a V-twin. Even though it's a parallel twin, the fire in order is that of a V-twin. But it's not thumping along. Like I'm not really, I'm not getting any vibration through the bike whatsoever. Even though the engine sounds like it is a meaty old unit below you. It is very, very smooth. I'm sitting at circa 70 mile an hour with just over 4,000 RPM. I'm sure you can see that on the readout. I like this display actually. It's very, very, very clear and I'm not getting too much. I'm not getting too much wind noise. I'm not getting very much buffeting. nice bit of road we will stick it into stick it into sport see what that is saying second gear <laughs> oh my god what the hell happened put a wheelie <laughs> slow down for these bends da -da -da. through this one let's go oh my god Absolute firecracker. Now the suspension. Yes, please talk to me. It's not too harsh. Honda, you understand that we don't want a bike to crash and bang when it's not a super bike. This is, yes. How is this 7,000 pound? Out of the box, the suspension, I, I don't think you'd even need to touch it. Of course you can't anyway, it's, it's not adjustable. So, just take it as it comes. And it's good enough. I'm weighing in at 85, 90 kilos. Feels good enough for my weight. And now we've got some national speed limit signs, second gear. Oh, you know what? It's got that low kick. It's got that parallel twin thump 
but it's set up to be that bit more peaky so the power comes in most of the power you can feel is at the at the top end of the rev range and you know I've got loads of confidence in these brakes I'm using two fingers on the front that and then out we go back on to the brakes and the thing as well with the gear shift it's hard to miss a gear the gear peg is so precise there's not a lot of play in the peg tiny little flick and you're in the next gear Now back to slow speed riding, the bike feels so light and the chassis is razor sharp and so what that means is and what it results in is that the bike changes direction very easy, it's very keen to do so, it doesn't take a lot of effort and so I mean if you're riding this around town, city it almost feels like you you could say like a scooter you know because <laughs> it doesn't feel like you're on a big old 750 the way it's sort of just maneuvering about here and i think because you're quite low in the bike too and the handlebars are just that bit high enough you feel well in control of the machine some more nationals here but i'm gonna leave it in fourth this time and and demonstrate the pickup yeah so it gives you an idea of in-gear acceleration and we're going uphill here all right 33 oh the suspension and the chassis oh it's incredible for the price the bike is bouncing around and just oh it, it's saying so settled at the same time like the bike is moving around below me However, I'm not getting nervous. Okay, quick summary then of the Honda Hornet. I'm going to say that I believe Honda have created quite a special bike here. For the fact that it's £7,000, I just cannot believe how good a bike it is for the price. It appears like a modest, grown up, almost commuter-like bike at first glance. Which I'll add, in my opinion, I also do think Honda could have made a better looking Hornet, but do not be put off by its lack of looks because the Hornet is such a great bike to ride. The engine is the best part. It is so versatile and it gives plenty of low down grunt, yet has this top end poke that will lift the front wheel on the power. The chassis is ever so playful too. It's very agile so it can change direction quickly and coupled with a forgiving suspension, you can throw it about and it soaks up the roughest of B roads while keeping you in complete control. Things I wasn't keen on though was as mentioned, the urgent throttle response, also the sports rider mode, it's far too intrusive at times and it's so obvious that it's holding you back that if you were, say, to flick from first to second, you'd get a huge amount of power come in and it would lift the front wheel. Plus, overall, I just think given the competition, Honda have really missed the mark with the styling. That said though, riding the Hornet was honestly the biggest surprise. I implore you to go and give one a go if you are considering the Hornet. Take my word for it, it is so very, very good for the money. And buy one before Honda realise and put the price up. Anyway, if you enjoyed this review, then please be sure to check out this suggested video on your screen. And with that said, I'm going to end this one here. Thanks for watching. See you later.